Okay, hey guys, Matt Preston, Built Proud, welcome back to the channel. Now today is a six month of year of this bad boy, sand here rooftop tent, so let's see, how does it hold up? Is it any good, and should you buy one? Okay, now these tents on these sort of cars, as you can see, are very tall. So obviously with this design, it's traditional like pop up and the back pops out. So it's not like a on the side design. Now, when the car's got big tires on, it's very high in the sky um, and the ladder actually can't quite reach the ground in certain angles. So with this tent, maybe the ladder could be a bit longer, but to be fair though, the ladder on this is pretty standard along all rooftop tents. So I think if your car's got like four inch lift 35s, so you're sort of asking for that not to work very well. Um, but that's why you get those canopy setups with the built-in ladders and that sort of stuff. But that is just a small thing. When I take this tent, I normally have small tires on for like touring. So I haven't had any dramas. But it also depends on your roof rack and how wide it is. Because if it's small, the ladder can get in closer to the bottom. Whereas mine, the, the tent sits in from the rack. So the ladder has to be off by a bit of an angle. Okay, so up there on the roof, I have a 200 watt solar panel. Now this is important because the gas struts can still lift all that weight on the tent, which is a good thing, okay? Now they've held up this whole time. Now the panel is on the lower side of the tent, but it still can hold the weight when I lift it up. Okay, now one of the biggest complaints with this tent that I've seen online is the setup. Because I like the normal rooftop tents when you literally just unpop the clips and open it up and that's it. And then you sort of put in your little onyx poles through the sides. This one's a bit different. You sort of pop it up and then you have to get inside and like leave these two pole clips in and then push the whole frame up and then put the clips in. So it's a little bit longer, but I don't have any dramas. Um, but if you're sort of new to camping, you haven't set up too many tents, I can sort of see why it'd be a bit tricky. Uh, also to the fact that you're like two meters off the ground, um, it's a bit hard to act, like, access in there because you're climbing up into the tent and it's not like 100% set up. Now, like I said before, I haven't had any issues. Um, I normally like to get up the back here in the ladder and then you just sort of tuck your head in like this and set it up. Okay, so that's fully set up now. It does pop out and it is quite nice and you get 30% more headroom to your normal traditional tents. So there are benefits to it taking a bit longer to set up. Okay, so when the awning's out, I can't get up through this way. Uh, but if you do, this is what you're entered with. So as you can see, uh, plenty of space, it's quite clean. Um, but these tents aren't as wide as the traditional tents. So between here and here, you can just fit two pillows and they're squishing each other. Whereas most tents, there'll be an extra 100 to 200 mil wider. Another way to tell this as well is if you look on the side of the rack here, most tents actually overhang the rack on either side. Whereas this one is, if anything, set in. Now, I'm actually not upset about it because this is a Prado, right? So it's actually a bit of a thinner car. So I actually don't mind having a slightly smaller tent because on the roof it looks more proportional and it fits better and also we're not in this tent every single night so it doesn't need to be massive in terms of comfort but this is still enough to be more comfortable than swag anything else you could ever do on the ground now other things so you get this little bar up here that's optional but every time you set the tent up it kind of does this it gets caught when you push this bar back and it just kind of gets like rappled up now you can just untangle it but it's a bit frustrating doing that all the time i personally think this light should be a bit more central to the tent um, because we actually sleep our heads at that end because we find it's just easier um, and your feet can kind of cone curve up this wall. Um, so that's just one thing we do. And also the pockets there are that end as well. Uh, these pockets are really handy, always use them. We put the sleeping bag covers in them at night. And then up here before, this is the pole system. You have to like unclip this and it swings back up into here. And doing this while the tent's falling on your head is a bit hard to do. So underneath you just sort of have this flat metal and the mounting bolts to the rails. And then this mattress, I think it's 65 mil. And it's got this really nice like cross top finish on it. It's really comfy. And there's little notch cutouts. So had no dramas with this, had no dramas within here. The roof's really high. So you feel like you have heaps of space. And because of the corner comes out, you have 30% more room. So I will say it feels very spacious in here considering it's not as wide as most tents. So on the very top of the tent, you have this double layer tent material. Now it's kind of for the skylight and it's, it's a great feature because you can open the zip, have a skylight at night. It's a great idea. 
The only problem is between the flap and the top of the tent and the material, wind can actually get in there and it can vibrate a little bit at night if it's quite windy night. And I looked online, someone else had the same sort of issue. Um, now you can literally just unclip it and flip it over or literally just like bundle it up and not use it. But it does, it is a, it is a second layer of water protection on the tent, which is a good idea. But wind can get in there and just make a little vibrating noise because it's such a tight area to get in. So that is one little thing I will mention on this that was a bit of a drawback. Um, but it is also a fixable option as well. I'm going to say overall, this is a really good tent and I feel like anyone that's in the market for one that looks a bit different and doesn't have the flappy awning bits and has 30% more room, this is for you. Up to overall, it's a good experience and I've had no dramas with it um, and I guess you just got to try and get one for yourself and see if you like it or not. So yeah, thanks guys for watching. Catch you guys next time on Built Prado.